Okay, physics students. Let's see if I can make sense of any of this for you. All right, most of this, again, is just know this, know that, know how to do this, know how to use these, and that's kind of what this is. It says use Newton's second law to qualitatively describe the relationship between M, A, and F. Um, again, mass, acceleration, and force. So uh, what did we find out? in the lab. I mean, that's kind of where this all started. What conclusions did you draw from the lab at the beginning of the unit? Well, we found out that, if you remember correctly, that the acceleration, oh boy, pen's not writing, that the acceleration is, well, in one of the experiments, it was 1 over m was our slope times f was our x variable. We altered, if you remember, we altered the force, how much force was pulling on the system to see its effect on the acceleration. And what we held constant was the mass of the system, and that showed up as our slope. Only it wasn't just the mass, it was 1 over the mass. And then we had experiment 2, where we had a equals F times 1 over M, where we had an inverse curve. You had to linearize it, and we found out the slope in that case was what we held constant, which was the force on the string. So the force pulling the car remained the same. The mass of the car changed, which inversely affected the acceleration more mass of the car, less the acceleration. Now, both of these gave us Newton's second law. Mathematically, Newton's second law is that the acceleration is directly proportional to the force, inversely proportional to the mass on, or the mass of the object that's being accelerated. All right, so we found out that the acceleration of an object is directly proportional to the force. In other words, as the force changes, so does the acceleration. More force, more acceleration. Less force, less acceleration. We found out that the mass of the system being changed does the opposite. The more massive the system, the less acceleration you get. Now this is with a constant force. The less mass you have of your system, the more acceleration you will have. So again, that is an inverse relationship. This is directly proportional. This one is inversely proportional. And that's Newton's second law. So that's the conclusion we drew from that. Um, so like these kinds of questions. If I cut the mass of the system in half, the acceleration would what? If this is one half of what it was before, let's think about this. If I cut mass by a half, it's a half of what it was, what happens to A? Think about it. If you take F and divide it by half of what you were dividing it by before, then what does that do to A? I hope you are thinking that it doubles it. If you cut the system in half, the opposite is going to happen. Remember, this is an inverse relationship. Whatever you do to the mass, the opposite of that will happen to the acceleration. If you cut it in half, it'll be double. If you cut it down to one-fourth, if you now have one-fourth of the mass that you had before, that means A is going to be four times bigger. It's the inverse. The inverse of what you do to the mass is going to happen to the acceleration. I hope that makes sense. Now, let me get rid of this. What if you change the force? Holding, holding the mass constant, if the mass is now going to be held constant, 
and you change the force. Well, what if you double the force? If you double the force, what happens to A? Well, it has to double. If you're pushing twice as hard, you should have twice the acceleration. Now, if, let me erase that, if you double the mass, if the mass is now twice as big as it was before, then what happens to A? It's only one half what it used to be. Remember, the acceleration is changed by the inverse of the factor that the mass has changed. Same factor as the force, inverse of the factor as the mass. I hope that makes sense. That, that's what we're saying here. That's what all of this right here is saying. That A and M are inversely proportional. A and F are directly proportional. Anyway, that's what you were supposed to have kind of gotten from that one. All right, next slide. Now, I don't... Uh, if you don't need to hear or see all of this, then just skip it. I don't care. It's up to you. Whatever you need, that's what you need to listen to and watch. Let's see. Okay. <coughs> this is the kinematics curves, all right? So you need to go back and kind of refresh your mind about the kinematics curves. So in other words, if I, if I sketch this, if I sketch a VT graph that looks like this, do you know what that means? Like, what does that look like for an XT graph? That's that one. What about the AT graph? Well, all my, all of my uh, T axes are a little uh, on the curvy side. Oh, that's even worse. So the AT graph is going to be what? That right there. Let's make it nice and bold so you can tell that from the T axis. And what's the motion map look like? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So again, this is getting, what the, this is getting faster. Oh boy, I got a sneeze coming on. Oh no, I better pause it. Okay. Phew, that was a doozy. Uh, where was I? Oh yeah, and then A is, oh, that's not A, that's a laser pointer. And then A is going to be like this, like that. Now. Again, I don't want to have to try to reteach all of this. I mean, we, we did this over and over and over again. Um, so just, just know what kind of motion you're looking at. When you see a VT graph, you should be able to tell, hey, cat, oh, you, mm, I got a cat issue. Gosh, I swear, wild kingdom here. Oh, jeez, where was I? Oh, yeah, no what these are telling, like this again, starts with no velocity, gets faster positively. Like you should know what the different VT graphs are telling you by how they're shaped, what they look like, all right? You should know that this one right here, let's see, how about, a, oh. so this right here means we're starting at zero velocity, but getting faster negatively. Faster negatively, right? And of course, this one means we're starting with fast negative, but getting slower, closer and closer to zero velocity. And then finally, this one here means we start fast and positive, but we get less fast. We get slower and slower and slower until we finally hit the zero. So those are the VT graphs that you need to know how to interpret. All right, next. Okay, oh my gosh, I, uh, I don't even know if you need to see any of this stuff. Um, you have to be able to determine the sum of the forces acting on an object. In other words, you need to be able to do summations, okay? Summations. So, in this case, sum, well, when they're... When they're not balanced, the sum's going to be 
MA. When they are balanced, they're going to equal zero. So what is this going to tell you? So this scenario, scenario one, what is this going to tell you? Is this going to be balanced or unbalanced? What do you think? Is there any way for us to know? Well, let's see. It says that there is a friction coefficient, and it is greater than zero. So there is friction in this system. But it does say the system is accelerating, even though there is some friction. So because there is acceleration, that means we have a summation equal to ma. Well, how would that be drawn out? Well, here's, here's what I'm going to say. All right, here's, here's your, oh, that's a, what force do we have to the right? We have force of friction. Force of friction is acting this way on the block. Yes, opposing its motion, right? What do we have pulling this way? Well, technically, it's the weight of block two. The two kilogram block, it's the weight of that block that's pulling, but it's pulling down. But the pulley is redirecting it, so it's really pulling our system to the left. And you're going to treat both of these as a single system. So we got the force of friction to the right, we got the force of gravity, Fg2, acting to the left. Must be unbalanced because they're telling us it's accelerating. That's supposed to be a single. Oh my gosh, what a mess. So what does that mean? That means the sum of the forces is... Oh, I got a mess here. Let me get some of this crap out of the way. Uh, oh, I can't even... Mm. Fg2 plus FF equals equals M A, where M in this case is what? Both. The whole system. We, we've, we've drawn this as a single system. Okay? Both objects acting together. I didn't draw a separate force diagram for this one and then for this one. I drew one force diagram as though these two things together total are a system combined. So that's how you would write your summation out. This one, by this one I mean number two. Oh my gosh, what is happening? Number two, we have, well first of all it says it's motionless. So this has, this has to be the case, right? Which means there has to be what between the block and the ramp? They don't tell us directly, but the fact that it's motionless means this has to be true. Well, of course, we have gravity force. Have to have gravity force. And, of course, we have to have a normal force. But we also have to have what? We have to have some friction force. If there wasn't a friction force, then it would not stay motionless. And when we start moving these things around, if I, if I take the gravity force and I move it up here, and then I take the friction force and I add it right here it should get us back to zero that's what that's telling us so what does that mean? well you got two summations in this case you have a summation in the x which would be FF plus FG x equals zero because again you're going to have an axis or axis system oh my gosh what is happening with this piece of junk like that where you will have components and like this. Oh my gosh, this is so messed up. Like that. So you will have an FGX and FGY like we've had before. That would be your X summation. How about your Y summation? Y summation? Oh my gosh, that's not a Y. Equals F 
n plus f g y equals zero. There you go. Oh, gosh. Um, oh, I guess we have another one here. All right, now, oh, now we have, hey, there's no friction. Mu is nothing. So that means we are going to have acceleration, and it is going to be F equals MA. So let's see the force diagram. First we have FG. We have FN, which is going to be a little less than FG. How do we know that? Because this cable is pulling up some, taking some of the weight off of the surface. So the surface does not have to push back with as much force. Uh, we don't have a friction force, but we do have the force of the pull or the string or whatever this is. And that's going to be broken down into components. I shouldn't have drawn it that far. Oh my gosh. And then... Oh, what a mess. So this one, we will have summation. This is terrible. Of the forces in the X will be force of string X equals what? M A. And we will see force summation in the Y is F G plus F N plus F S Y equals equals zero. Golly, what a mess. So there's that. I don't know. Hopefully that makes sense. If not, I don't know. I don't know what to do anymore.